Hello guys. So last time we tried to do the number three to find a three of a kind and we figured that we could have two three of a kinds but then I realized that the first three of a kind that will be found is gonna be the higher three of a kind so we don't actually care about the second three of a kind because we always consider the highest one possible. So in order to solve this problem all we need to do is create a for loop and I'm gonna do that right here and do something that is pretty identical to what we did earlier for the for our uh, right here straight analysis which is basically to build an array of two values in our case it's gonna be the three counter and the the three counter and the two counter. There we go. And then do the analysis twice, take the results, index the array to get both of those results, and each one of those results will be either a four of a kind, result of the four of a kind, or the result of the three of a kind. We can further expand this to get at least the first two of a kind. Uh, but we can, there is such a thing as a two pair. So we will need to basically find the first one and then the second highest one by converting the first highest one into a zero. This is the four of a kind. And this here will be our three of a kind. Three of a kind. So four of a kind and three of a kind have been taken care of. Full house, pair, and two pair. We'll get back to that. Let us go ahead and run this just to make sure three of a kind works. In this scenario, we do not have a three of a kind, but it seems we do have a straight. How is this finding a straight? If this is four, and this is one, it should find a straight, not it should not find a straight otherwise. Let's see. If the sum of the first and the twelfth is greater or equal to five. Create indicator. Does this say anything that is five or greater? Six. How how in holy hell does this add up to six? What is it finding on the first element? First element is zero. Perfect. And the second element? The second element is four. The second element is six. Whoa. The twelfth element of the aha newly developed number. The twelfth element here the twelfth element here, array 8, aha, for the second sequence here, we need to create an added step, just realize this, we need to create a step that would convert every single number into a 1. So uh, let's make this a little larger. This is not an issue for the flush because we cannot have two of the same card, but it is an issue for the summation because we can have multiples there. This does counting, for example. This here should do, instead of counting, uh, it should do basically take this and if Let's see. 
a for loop, a pre for loop. Okay, if we're going to use a pre for loop, I would like to set it up by itself and give it a name. So that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to set up a for loop right before all this. And this for loop basically is going to take this in. And if this is equal to zero, then uh, let's get a selector in there. If it is equal to zero, set it to zero. It's like, oh, you are zero? Perfect. Otherwise, please set it to 1. And then re-output it. And this output will need to be in there. And there we go. Now, what should we call this? I actually have no idea. This is a very silly little thing, which, I mean, I could call it just linearization. So this is doing counting. This is flattening. So we flattened it to zeros and ones. And there we go. The straight should disappear. Ta-da. We only have four of a kind. Yes. And the four of a kind is for the number two. Perfect. Now that we have those, let us go ahead and four of a kind analysis, counting is done here, flat thing is done here, straight is done here. This is four and three of a kind analysis, four and three of a kind analysis. Now what we need to do is the two and two pair analysis, which goes in here. These are the two pairs. All right, uh, let's see. We will have to take a similar system to this. Yes, I'm putting it in a pre box. And instead of all this, just takes in the sequence. And as we were trying to do for the three, we pretty much have to set up a true or false case where if this is true, this will process, and in the event that it actually is true, we will need to take the array, replace an array subset, we'll need to replace the initial array at index whatever was found here with the number, well, what did I just do? Okay, close that. Uh, close, close, uh oh. This is bad. Okay, save, just in case. And create a constant of zero. So basically, replace it with a zero. Now that it's replaced with a zero, we can go ahead and run this test again, trying to find the second number. And this will give us the second number. Straightforward stuff. And that number, if found, will come out here. Uh, if not found, that will just be another zero. Create constant of zero. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, now that we have both numbers, this number and this number, now we know that this number is bigger than that number, so if we have, uh, let's go ahead and get a marker on this true here. Uh, default is false. So if this is true, then this is our first pair. Um, if this is true, 
if this is true, then we have a two pair. Whoa! Now, how do you identify what a two pair looks like? A two pair is basically a second pair. I don't need this. I just realized we don't need this at all because this right here is my second pair right so so if I were to take these this is my first pair so this here is a pair and if I take this and copy it again this here is my two pair right that's my second pair so if there is a two pair the values of the two pair are the first and the second this is my two pair right here now my full house is basically from what I'm saying here the full house is simply a, uh, a point where you have it where you have that same um, 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 um. means that you have a 2 and a 3 that is your full house so this is a pair and 2 pair analysis there we go parent to pair analysis done that only leaves us with the final that only leaves us with the final we did the pair and the two pair basically in this scenario let's see it says oh let's run it first there should be none none perfect now we have a four of a kind we could have if we click that, there we go. Now I should have a pair and a three of a kind. Da, 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 da. Now, if I have a pair and a three of a kind, it means that I have a full house is deduced. So we deduce. This is the only one that is deduced later on from the data that we do have. Uh, so that is a post processing system. So there we go. We have all our analysis here. Let me go ahead and arrange all this and get back to you guys. All right, so I just uh, arranged all of these. So this is our analysis section. This here, let's go up the line. Um, these have not been used. This here is our pre-analysis and this here is our card reading. So this reads the cards this here does a pre-analysis, basically preparing all combinations. This one here performs the initial analysis. Yes, I'm calling it an initial analysis. Now, we need to move on to the next step, which does the interpretation of the initial analysis. Now, these here, all of these, are only running for the first, uh, for our zero with the player's cards. This will need to run for every single possibility and we'll get to that in a way later video now the next thing to do now that we have all of these is to basically do a kind of uh, create a um, well we need to create a way to define what is a win and what is not a win so we need to look at all of these and basically interpret them and sum them up to see, well, in this case, just interpret them to know what it is that we have. So in this case, obviously, we have a, we have three kind and pair, so we should have a full house. If the system is successful, we're going to have to rank these and put them up. So this is what we'll do in our next episode, is we'll try to start creating a ranking system if you will for those i will see you guys in our next episode